What's going on, YouTube world? Welcome back to a little bit, man. Gaming, bringing you. you. Know what that means? Know what? Know what that means? It means Friday night SmackDown review incoming. First things first. If y'all can hit that like, subscribe, and share the notification button. Also, leave a comment down below if you like these reviews. What you thought of Friday night SmackDown? Just go home show before. Uh, I when this go up will be tomorrow's. Um. Uh, 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 what's the pay per view? Elimination Chamber. <laughs> it escaped my mind. <laughs> uh, but yeah, do all those great things and let me know what you think about last night's show. Also, get uh, also check out that Mortal Kombat 2021 reaction trailer I did, uh, or the reaction to I did to the trailer. <laughs> and uh, yeah, with all that said, do all those great things for me because it helps the channel grow, helps me grow, helps everything grow, helps me get more content out there, helps me be a greater. YouTube creator. With that being said, let's turn our attention to this uh, SmackDown. So, you know, we got to start off with the opener, right? So, Edge opens up Friday Night SmackDown. Now, didn't expect that, but then I should have known because I should have seen the tweet. They did tweet that Edge was going to be doing that. But I'm kind of glad I didn't see the tweet because it was an unexpected surprise, but I didn't think Edge was going to show up. But then again, I said it. I should, I should have known. But anyway, Ed shows up on Friday Night SmackDown. He opens up. He said he got some big decisions because now, not only do Drew, not only will Drew McIntyre be the defending, the bad, 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 couldn't get the words out. Not only will Drew McIntyre be defending the WWE Championship inside the Elimination Chamber, um, Roman Reigns will be will be defending the Universal Championship. At Elimination Chamber, but he opted not to be inside the Elimination Chamber, but at the Elimination Chamber, meaning that there's still going to be a SmackDown's Elimination Chamber match. It's just whoever wins the SmackDown Elimination Chamber match will have to fight Roman Reigns right after that match. Basically, they get a championship match that same night with Roman Reigns, which is a hillish, dickish move because now he's going to be the first competitor while somebody's just going to be coming out of the, uh, coming out of the uh, chamber and Tell tells Roman Reigns is going to be the champion. He's not going to lose. And I, I find it hard pressed to believe that you know Roman is going to lose, or you know this club. He he probably lose at WrestleMania, but he's not going to lose at Elimination Chamber. So it's just basically whoever comes out of Elimination Chamber is going to get beat by Roman. We already know. So spoilers for Elimination Chamber. Uh, yeah. So Roman comes out. He uh, confronts Edge and tells Edge that he doesn't have 13 different possibilities on who he will face at WrestleMania. He only got one possibility, that's his him. And that he should, he, you know, Roman Reigns still wants him to choose him, you know, to so that to be the, uh, the fight at WrestleMania. And Edge saying, you know, you need me to choose you so you could be the main event at WrestleMania. Because whoever I choose, if it's not you, you won't be the main event at WrestleMania. So, you know, they little bars back and forth, you know, they, they, you know, they kind of try to get in each other's head. And, you know, he's like, <clears throat> excuse me, almost just, uh, <clears throat> he, uh, he said, oh, you don't want me to reveal the cracks. I can see the cracks in your armor, man. I can see you, you're slipping, man. You, do you really, I haven't even focused on you yet. This is what you do. This is what I see when I haven't even focused on you. Do you really want me to focus on you? And. He basically was like Roman doing his silent thing, and then he he hands his, the mic and championship to Paul Heyman, and he walks towards Edge. And Edge thinking, you know, okay, we about to fight. He, and, you know, Roman's like, hold on, hold on, hands free, and he just whispers something into his ear that we are not privy of hearing, and then they just leave. Oh no! Before that happened. Um, Sami Zayn came out and uh, basically was saying he was being disrespected by. It's one thing to be disrespected by the WWE management, but now he's being disrespected by Roman Reigns and Edge. And he's saying that, you know, he was saying that they both are wrong and that Roman shouldn't be focused, uh, focused on Edge and WrestleMania. He should be focused on him, on him and the danger he poses to Roman Reigns' championship reign. Roman just don't, pay, don't even look at Sami Zayn. And Sammy just run his mouth and Jay end up super kicking uh, Sammy. 
which we'll, we'll get with the tension that caused. We'll get to later on tonight uh, because I think it was going to be a, a it's going to be a, a, a triple a, a three versus three tag team match. Uh, it'll be it was going to be Cesaro, Daniel Bryan, and Kevin Owens versus Jay Uso, Sami Zayn, and I think I'm gonna say King Corbin was it? Yeah, yeah King Corbin. And but the first match on the night was Sinsuke Nakamura versus Apollo Cruz, and this was billed that whoever wins after what happened last week, I guess there was a bill that whoever wins would get a shot at Big E for the Intercontinental Championship. And they was even asking Big E, like, if uh, Apollo Crews win, would you get him another shot at the Intercontinental Championship? He was like, no, no, I won't. I already beaten him three times. So, even, you know, he was saying even if he did win this match, I still wouldn't get him a shot. So, it was, <laughs> I like that response because it was different. Because we use, usually if the person, whoever wins gets the shot, but we, you know, this that was different to hear that the champion said even if Apollo wins, he still wouldn't get the shot. Um, Apollo Cruz and Sinsuke Sok- Sok- had a uh, great back and forth. It was built around the tension, but it was Sinsuke kind of somewhat got overshadowed here because of the story they were trying to build with Apollo Cruz and Big E and the tension between the two. So it was like it, it was hard for Sinsuke to have some shine in it because it was like he was just a plot tool more than a legit competitor to uh to biggie it was more like he was just a plot tool but you know it's still a great match and paulo cruz ended up getting beat uh because uh, i think Sisuke went for like the arm bar and when paulo tried to get out of it you know he tried to like get out of it. he was trying to use his legs to help him get out of the arm bar and Sisuke ended up grabbing the legs and went for the pin Got the one, two, three, quick pin. And um, what the biggest thing about this match was that Apollo, uh, they finally, as you, you as you could say, he finally went full heel because he um, he he was basically shot that he got pinned like that. And then he basically attacked Sensuke Nakamura, beating him up. And then he threw him to the outside. And you could hear Big E saying, you know, what are you doing? It's over. What are you doing? It's done. Yeah. And uh, Paulo Cruz, after throwing uh, Sinsuke into the uh, into the uh, into the um, uh, was it he not into the ring apron into the barricade, he walked over to go get the uh, steel steps because he was going to hit Sinsuke with the steel steps. And here comes Big E. You know he's telling him, "No, put it down. It's done. What are you doing? Use your head. Think it's done." Oh, you, you know, he he just looked at uh, Paulo. Just looked at Big E. Picked up the steps and was still about to go hit uh, Sensuke with it. So Big E had to get in between them. It was like, no, it's still saying, no, it's done, it's done. So, you know, a couple of moments of that, he basically was telling them it's done, put the, put it down. And Paul put, basically put it down. Eventually, he put it down. I like he was going to leave. <clears throat> and then uh, Big E went to go check on Sensuke. And Apollo came and basically, instead of acting like he was going to leave, he just, st- he almost, he just stopped inching towards like he was going to leave, but then he just grabbed the steel steps and rammed it into both Siska and um, Big E. Uh, um, he proceeded to not, uh, not Big E. It was, it was funny because he kind of he kind of botched it a little bit. It was a little botched there because I don't think uh, Apollo was supposed to trip and fall. Like he, after he hit Big E and, uh, and or Siska with the steel steps, he kind of and dropped the steel steps. He kind of like tripped over Big E and uh, fell. But then he got he got back up and he did what he was supposed to do. Not he not Sensuke over the barricade, and then he started pummeling Big E and beating Big E, taunting Big E, and then he I think he beat him, he beat him up some more, threw him in the ring, threw the steel steps into the ring, and he was getting ready to hit Big E with the steel steps. But the referee would you know basically did this time the referee telling him to put it down and. Big E had like rolled out the ring. He was like, "Great, he's out the ring now." But he keep telling him to put it down. So he like he got mad and was like, "Almost." He said it the way how he just he's about to say this next line. He almost said it like, uh, "Like when Thor was uh, told by Cap- when Captain America told Thor to put the hammer down, and you know Thor was like, "You want me to put the hammer down?" <laughs> and that's how uh, Apollo Cruz did here. He was like, 
he was he after a while the referee telling him to put the steps down. He was like, You want me to put the steps down? You want me to put it down? You want me to put it down? Alright, I'll put it down. And he just dropped it over the uh out on the outside on to, on top of Big E. Though you didn't see it then. So it so it dropped on Big E. You just you know, you heard it hit the ground and you know, obviously assuming it you know, it hit Big E. Cause then when they went back, it was kind, it was laid up like it was on Biggie and like and Biggie was in pain, and Apollo Crews basically turned heel. I kind of and, and you, you see that as I went in depth into it, that means I actually paid attention to this segment. The next segment was another was was a promo by Seth Rollins. He he, he and you know basically saying he plans to destroy everyone who doesn't abide by the vision. And by the vision, he means. The vision of leading SmackDown to the uh, to to being greater and better than what it is, and he said he found him and his lords fought some like uh, suit against everybody I guess who walked out on him last week, especially Cesaro. He and he said the reason why he did what he did to Cesaro because he felt like Cesaro was patronizing him and um, disrespecting him by not only being the last one there. But being the last one, being the last one there, and telling him that he didn't, he haven't changed. So he felt like that was disrespectful. So he said he followed the suit, and he's always went to the boards, blah blah blah, all this hill stuff. But the thing is, I guess they setting up a, a feud with uh, Cesaro and uh, Seth Rollins. Then we got a throw, uh, almost to me, a throwaway match between the Wire Squad, Natalia, and Tamina. Um, I really didn't pay attention to it because it was they was somewhat. I paid attention to it enough to know that they were talking for the first time. They actually put the caveat that these people, these the, you know, two teams are trying to vie for an uh, opportunity to get at the women's tag team championship. But at the end, I didn't really pay attention. I just know that um, Billy Kay came out this time. It's like she was trying to be on Tamina. And uh, Natalia's side, and she ended up causing the Riot Squad to get distracted, and they end up getting getting the uh, getting penalty, losing the match because of the distraction from Billy K. They didn't really care too much. Moving on, um, and then we got another segment, uh, which was uh, a it, I guess it was it her uh, what's this Bailey's so called Ding Dong Hello. And she and she had Natalia, uh, oh, I said Natalia, uh, Nia Jax and Sonya Blazer on the show, and they basically was out there just to. Uh, they had a little funny bit where they both was trying to get into the door, try to walk through the door, but they both couldn't because they they tried to do it at the same time. So you know they both did it like twice, and then you know Nia just like man move. She shoved uh, Sonya and then. And, uh, and went through, but uh, yes, yeah, the basis. I'm not gonna spend too much time. It was just basically dogging Sasha and and uh, uh, and, uh Bianca Bel uh, Belair. They basically was uh, dogging them until they both came out. Uh, Reginald, for some reason, who's getting more screen time. I don't know why they're giving more screen time to Reginald, but it's odd. It's like I, I it's kind of odd, and I kind of get it because it's like. With this, this is just a ploy by Carmella. You know, she's trying to get. You know, they try to make it seem like Reginald is basically going rogue. You know, because he got like a thing for Sasha, but who knows, right? It's either he is he going rogue, or it's like a little trick to get they like to get good with Sasha. So maybe Sasha will give Carmella another shot at the title. Who knows? But the, it broke down to basically Reginald inserting himself into the feud, saying. You know, tell Bianca and Sasha because they start bickering about Bianca. Because then Sasha says something about Bianca choosing her at WrestleMania, which Bianca then take Connie to because she said, you know, she's going to choose who she's going to choose, and she didn't like that. But guess you know, Sasha was out there proclaiming that she's going to choose her, and Reginald was like, wait, we shouldn't be fighting each other. We should be fighting them. The three of us should be fighting the three of them. And it ended up leading to the next match of the night, which was um, Bianca Belair, Banks, and Reginald versus um, Blazer, Jax, and Bailey. You know, even though Bailey wasn't even, even in ring gear, but apparently it was made official during the commercial break. And it was it was a good match. It was funny. I mean, 
it was funny to see, uh, you know, it. I guess you could say a somewhat intergender match because it was, you know, it was a uh, a man, uh, you know, a team a team of two women and man versus a team of three women, and most the most, you know, again Reginald got the most spots in the match. And he you know he fought, he got he had a little fun spot with Nia when Nia basically overpowering him. He even tried you know like he being like a man. Okay, he tried to overpower Nia. And Nia still pounded you know still beat the hell out of him. But uh, Sasha and Bianca end up getting a drop kick at uh, uh, Reginald. I think Reginald tried to go for a crossbody and Nia caught it. And when Nia turned, uh, Bianca Belair and um, Bianca Belair and uh, Sasha end up drop kicking Reginald uh, in the back to make uh, not uh, to make Nia like fall and Reginald end up getting the pin, which would which was an okay match in itself. I you know I can't say I, I didn't, can't say I wasn't entertained by it. Entertaining me for what it was, interesting. Uh, it led to the next promo, which was Carmella confronting Reginald about his actions with uh, with Sasha with Sasha, but. It basically wasn't much to talk about. She just basically tell him, tell him she it's okay. She's not mad. She know it. She know that when the time comes, he'll do the right thing. And then she gets mad because the wine wasn't uh, good, and she threw it in his face and told him to go get some more wine. Um, the next match would be uh, Ray Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio versus Otis and Chad Gabriel or the uh, Alpha Academy, as they're being called. Um, not much really, I didn't really care much about it, I guess it was supposed to be, it did have the caveat that, they, uh, like, just like the women's, just like the little, ta oh, I forgot, the, because of the victory too, uh, at Elimination Chamber, Salsa Banks and Bianca Belair is going up against, um, is going up against, uh, Nia Jax and Simon Blazer. But, uh, yeah, the Alpha Academy... Match was also built, having the potential to have the championship match uh, with Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode, the Dirty Dolls, as they call themselves. And, uh, you know, they they was even talking about the street, you know, they were announced to try to get to the talk about the street profits, but they, they like Biggie, just said, you know, the street profits are behind us. You know, we, we're focused on the next challenger who could be Chad Gable or Otis or Dominic Mysterio or Rey Mysterio. And. Again, and then it, Rey Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio end up getting the win only because of by DQ. Because when you in, you know, if you in a tag team match, when you tag your partner, you know, when you get tagged in, the partner that, that tagged out got to get out the ring, and they got DQ because Chad wouldn't get out the ring, and he kept making, um, he kept instructing Otis to just basically kept giving um, Mysterio like splashes, and you know, he kept getting on the top rope and splashing them. So even though Dominic Mysterio, Dominic Mysterio and Rey Mysterio got the win, it was via DQ, and I think Rey is like uh, kayfabe injured. But it, the big story is that they they turn another heel turn or uh, was Otis. You know they had they finally fully turned um, Apollo heel, and now they turn Otis heel. Um, then that led to the next match, which was the final match of the night. Which was, you know, Dan Bryan, Owens, and Cesaro um, versus Sami Zayn, uh, J uh, Jay Uso, and uh, King Corbin. And now, what I was talking about earlier, the little tension was that now the little caveat coming to the match was Jay and Sami was at odds because Sami, you know, earlier in the night, uh, Sami ended up super kicking. Um, I mean, Sami. Uh, Jay ended up super kicking Sami Zayn. And uh, so down there was a little tension, but they ended up having a, it was a decent back and forth match, you know. So Brian Cesaro, they was worried about tagging with Owens, giving Owens history on portraying his tag team partners. But Owens assured them that last week it was the, the because of the chaos of the brawl. That's why he stunned both Brian and Cesaro, and that he's not going to stun them tonight. But that they got to worry about him getting worry about getting stunned by him. At Elimination Chamber, but tonight he just want to win the match. So and I forgot that was in the backstage promo when they were talking to, uh, when they was uh, bringing up Owens uh, past about him portraying. This was before the match, but then during the match it was a good back and forth. Uh, 
I guess I'm gonna go do it quickly because like the the caveat of the match is what happened after the match. But Dan Bryan after a good back and forth with the good submission holes and tags and all that type of stuff, Bryan ended up getting the win because uh, he put uh, he put uh, Sami Zayn in the yes lock. Also known as the LaBelle lock. But, yeah, he put uh, Sami Zayn in the uh, yes lock. Ended up uh, getting a submission win. But the caveat was that everybody, you know, they're all because these, the, uh, these six competitors were the people that was in the SmackDown uh, Elimination Chamber. So, they all started hitting their moves on each other. And I think... Uh, Oh, yeah, Edge was at ringside, too. I've almost forgot about that. Edge was at ringside scouting the potential people who might face Roman and could be, um, or beat Roman, and he might be able to choose, you know, who he faced at WrestleMania. And then after everybody hit their match, I forgot who it was. It might have been Daniel, it might have been Daniel Bryan or, um, or uh, Kevin Owens, but somebody got speared by Edge. Um, no, it was Jay. It was Jay. I remember now. Cause Jay had a uh, super kick. I think he super kicked Daniel Bryan or Kevin Owens. And when he turned around, he got speared by uh, Edge. And then Edge got speared from out of nowhere. Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns came out of, from out of nowhere and speared uh, Edge. And the ep and the night ended with, Ed, you know, with Roman holding the title up in the air. You know, signifying that he's still, even after this Sunday, he's still going to be uh, Universal Champion. So, with that being said, if I had to grade this show, this go-home show, it wasn't bad. It was a decent show. It wasn't bad. I ain't going to say it was bad. I ain't going to say it was good or great. You know, it was It was good. It was decent. It was good, decent, but it wasn't great. It wasn't 10 out of 10 great, but it was. it wasn't you know, horrible either. So I guess I give it 7.5 big ups just because it was a decent match. It was just some things I didn't like, you know, I didn't, I, it, it was kind of intriguing about this new Owens thing, but had I, it, it had they been building towards it, it might've been better. It just came out of nowhere. So it was like, I kind of sort of into it, but at the same time, why did it just come out of nowhere? Um, I really didn't care for the uh, Riot Squad match at all. H hence why I didn't really go into detail about it. Um, I think that was it, though. I don't think it was another... The, the Ding Dong Hello segment was okay, so I didn't really... I didn't have no problems with that. Uh... Yeah, I think the only thing, two things I had a problem with, uh, with this show, other than like, I forgot to, I forgot to mention too throughout the night, um, Edge had talked with most of the, uh, with all six competitors for the SmackDown um, Championship one on one. That's why he was out there at ringside to scout them because he throughout the night, you know, in different backstage segments, he would just talk. He talked to Corbin. Brian, Kevin, um, I don't think he, I think the only person he did talk to was Jay, but he did talk to, uh, Cesaro, Kevin, Owens, uh, he didn't get the check, I don't think he really talked to Sammy, because Sammy was out there running his mouth earlier, but yeah, he did go to most of the competitors, he didn't, he wasn't in the ring with, because he was in the ring with earlier with Jay and Sammy, so, I think those were the only two people he didn't talk to. But, uh, yeah, 7.5 Big Us, just because the only two things I had a problem with was the Rupert, the uh, Riot Squad match and the Mysterio, the Ray Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio because they be on the, con they, I don't know what they doing with them. They be on the kind of a losing streak, and it's, I feel like Ray Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio really need to be on the winning streak. They really need to be given a, a proper push. But other than that, yeah. If y'all like this, like videos like this, if you want more videos like this, let me know in the comments down below. And uh, yeah, see you in the next video. Peace. Oh, hundred subscribers, you thought I was gonna click off. Also, we gotta go hundred subscribers, so subscribe now. Peace.